Hi, today I'm going to break down chapter six from my book, Six Figure Partnerships, called the 6K Rule. So this is the core mechanism that controls how fast your results come and like what are the size of results. So sometimes that I get this question asked when people are like either thinking about my mentorship program or even just think about starting the business in general. It's like, I, I want to hit X goal. Is this reasonable? My answer is always, to, it always is, it depends on what you charge. You see, the smaller the price point that we're charging, the more clients we need in order to go and hit an income goal. Let's say, for example, that your income goal is to hit like $7,000 in the next like 60 days. If your price is $100 a month, that's a very unrealistic goal for most people because you just, you're not going to have the marketing chops to get that many clients um, to do it. What is seven? We said 7,000 divided by 150. That's 46 clients that you have to get in order to be at 7,000 a month. But let's say that you get two clients for $3,500 a month each. Okay, that's incredibly realistic, right? Because you can handle the volume. It only took you two clients. You didn't have to get on that many consultation calls. And you only have two main parties you have to like contact and talk to from now on. So the most important concept that you need to understand is called the 6K rule. Also, if you're watching this thing on my YouTube channel, then I'm going to put this document inside of the inside of the YouTube description. Now, if you want and you have any questions about like this or this document, I'm going to actually open this document up for comments so people can like leave comments and ask questions. Now, I'm looking for mainly questions just in case there's a place that's like not very clear enough to explain for you so I can make sure I have a complete clarity and help you out as much as possible. So awesome. So the most important concept you need to understand is the 6K rule. That means that you need to get clients for at least $6,000 per year in your business in order to have freedom. Now, that way, the most clients you need to break six figures is about 17 clients per year. So this means that the minimum that we're willing to charge someone for monthly services is about $500 per month. That means no matter if you have a pricing calculator, no matter what, whatever the pricing calculator says, even if it says like the person's work is worth like $350, I am still charging $500 per month minimum. Anything below 100 to 499 is negligible for the businesses that will be referring to us. So basically what that means is like most companies can pay $500 a month, right? They only want to do 150 or 300 because they just don't really value your service, right? Like it's, it's most people can do that. It's very negligible. Now, remember, you have the power to accept or to deny any clients who do not fit your criteria. So the $500 per month is more of a mindset than an ability to pay. Now, before I discovered the 6FP method, I had a client that said he couldn't afford to pay me like $450 a month. So I went to him and like I charged him like 150 bucks a month. And then when I checked under the hood one day, I saw that his average monthly business meals was about $5,000, okay? That's when I realized I was incredibly undervalued. What that means is like he valued like meals and like random like business entertainment things more than my service. Now, I'm not saying that like people should value your service more than that, but if you can only pay some five, $150 a month because you only want to pay $150, but you're spending five grand a month on this, is not just like his, this is not his personal food or his groceries. This is five grand a month on just going to random, like, random, like, expensive restaurants for like, you know, steak. And it's not even really a business expense. You know, it's one of those like expenses where like he's going out, but not really talking about business. They can't really write it off, but they do. That's, that's kind of what that was like. And that was a very slap in the face kind of moment for me. Now, another reason why I really enjoy a higher price client is that they're easier to deal with. Oftentimes, they're also too busy to micromanage you, and they oftentimes respect you more. Now, cheaper clients, they text you at weird hours. They get upset when you don't bend over backwards. They don't really respect the fact that you have other clients whose needs are just as important as theirs. And oftentimes, like, they'll wait till the last minute to get you stuff and always want you to jump on and jump at the stuff they do. Like They'll be like, hey, can you do this? Or do you tomorrow? And it's like... Well, it's due tomorrow, and it, it's just it, there's just just not really a a, a, um, a thought process about like you and kind of your business. Just they have a need and they want you to jump. It's very it can be very very annoying because it's like even though they're paying you a really small amount of money, they're not really the client is not really thinking about how much money they've paid you. For them, in a lot of cases, like black or white, it's I'm paying you. Whether it's a dollar or it's a million dollars, I'm paying you. You need to work for me the way that I want you to work. Right. So that's why it's also important to charge these higher price points. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind, 
Higher price clients does not mean the company has to be a billion dollar conglomerate. Now, for most companies, if they paid someone $3,000 per month, you would be on the lower end of their pay grade, right? Most companies. Now, really, I recommend going after clients that are making between $500,000 to about $10 million in revenue, with the sweet spot being most companies that are around like $3 million per year. I'll give you more of a reason as to like why I'm thinking of the $3 million per year mark when um, we talk about like the high, hybrid pricing approach down a little bit below. Cool. So another reason why I like to go after high paying clients is due to the effort, energy, and my revenue goal. So a lot of people think that like lower paying clients are easier to get. So in order to like maximize their effort and generate like some traction, like some initial traction, they go after a lot of smaller paying clients. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, okay, well, I'd only ask for $150 a month. So if I just go after like a bunch of small clients, they'll all say yes. And like, they'll, they'll want to work with me. In reality, though, it actually takes the same amount of energy to get in front of like a high paying client as it does to get in front of a low paying client. That's why when we talked in the beginning of this video when I said like if you're trying to get to 7000 a month and you have to go and get 46 clients in 60 days, it's very, very challenging to do. Most people are going to be at a pace of adding between like one to like maybe five clients per month. Um, That's like a really good rate of growth. Right. If you're doing this stuff on your own, you don't like have anyone like coaching or helping you through, you know one to two is probably 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 one every other month is probably what most people are going to do if you have more help then again it's not just about like the number of clients it's also about like really i'm focused on like how much is your revenue growing month over month right because like if you keep your profit margins really strong and if you build um with profit margins on the forefront of your mind when you're pricing out your services then as long as you're growing your revenue it doesn't really matter whether i have five clients ten clients whatever right the, it's easier to hit a revenue goal if each new client adds on average between $1,000 to $2,000 a month. That way, after six months, you're able to cover your personal expenses. And after 12 months, you would have replaced your income. So now, that's in most cases. Like, I know some of you, like, watching or reading this might be at, you know, 200 to 250 k a year at your job, okay? But I'm just saying for the majority of people, right? Now, I've seen a number of different, like, pricing models throughout the year, some that work well in some cases, but then some that don't really work in like other cases. I'll go into some of them like right now. So one pricing model some people have is gut feeling. So please do not go by gut feeling. Your gut is not properly calibrated to how much time something will take. And even if your gut is, you know, is accurate, your gut can be clouded by inaccurate information provided by the client or in some cases, some clients are really, really masterful at crafting a story of hardship. It just isn't worth it. Okay. So, so for example, like I talked about, like the guy said he couldn't afford 100, uh, 450 a month. And I get in there, he's spending a lot of money. There will be clients that you come into contact with in your business where they say they can't afford your service at $300 a month. You go inside and then they have a million dollars in cash inside the bank. And they might even have that in multiple bank accounts. I've seen that in like three or four different bank accounts a company had where they had like a million to $2 million each, right? So it's like some of these guys are masterful at like getting contractors to accept lower rates. Now, just, again, just isn't worth in the beginning. Unless you hate money, I would suggest you avoid the gut feeling style of pricing, okay? Second pricing is fear-based pricing. So this is very similar to gut pricing. It's, it's arguably actually a little bit worse than gut pricing. Now, this is when a person comes to you and they corner you on the phone and make you give like a price quote before you're ready for it. So sometimes like you might be thinking of the call and you think it's just like an introductory call. And like, well, how much is it going to cost? And like, well, I need to see your books. Well, how much is it going to cost? Just give me a range. Like, can you give me a price? Right. And then you kind of are on your heels. You're not expecting it. You're caught off guard and you kind of throw, off, throw out like a random price and it, it it's not really calibrated. OK, in this case, if someone does get on the phone, they try and like press you into price um, a couple different ways. If, if you have good sales skills, you're going to be controlling the call anyway. So that's not going to happen as much. If it does, I like giving a range of prices. Now, the reason why I like doing a range is because automatically you can tell them basically the range to see if they're willing to pay within that price point or not. If they're not, then OK, cool. We just saved a lot of time. If they are, this buys you even more time because say, well, what causes something to be on the low range or the high range? Oh, it depends on the scope of work. Okay, well, what do you mean when you say scope of work? Well, I need to see access to your QuickBooks, right? So you have to go and add me and then blah, blah, blah. So then it actually enables you to be able to buy yourself some time so you don't have as much pressure. Now, another reason why I consider this fear pricing is because some people will lower the rates that are reasonable, reasonable just because they want to get a client. So 
Always remember, we are not in the game of having the most clients. Okay, just like we talked about a couple minutes ago. We are in the game of having an efficient business. Where we add value to our clients. And we make a great amount of money for the time that we spend working. Okay, just getting the client leads to being overworked, underpaid, and stuck at your job for years. Okay, even decades longer than what you need to. Like um, if you read earlier inside this book, like if you're watching the YouTube channel, I probably recommend getting the book. Um, if you if you already have the book, like we talked about earlier inside the book, one of our students, Melissa, she was in business for over a decade and she was still working at her full time job due to fear based pricing. Right. She didn't think she could charge the price she wants. So she always like cut her rates in half or even like charge a quarter. She had some clients that were paying her like fifty dollars a quarter. That's per quarter. OK, that's crazy. So. And yeah, you know, like, and that means that so she was working her full time job. Um, she she had you know children, and she was making thirty five hundred dollars a month after over a decade in business. Okay, she started business two thousand eight. I met her in twenty, I believe it was twenty either twenty one or twenty two. I can't remember exactly, but suffice to say, it's over ten years in business that she was in there. Okay, it's all because of pricing. Now remember, you have to elevate. You have to approach this systematically and always be thinking about the long term, not just the short term release of fear emotions like the bit. This business will work out. OK, like I, I can't stress that enough to you. This business will work out. You just need to give it time. OK, and you need to do things right. I'm a living testament to the fact that you cannot fail if you do not quit. OK, you cannot fail if you do not quit. So the problem that most people have is like when things are not moving at the speed as much as they want, they kind of have this like cloud of doubt, fear, pressure, and anxiety that kind of come over them. For me, it was actually over my my back left shoulder. Um, my my camera's like obviously like reversed, but I would just feel just a sense of like kind of like oh my gosh, nothing I do is working in business. I I, I can't make this stuff work. Maybe I should you know maybe I'm just not an entrepreneur. That was the thing that that I heard. Heard in my head a lot, like maybe I'm not an entrepreneur because I had tried things like e-commerce, I had tried things like um, web design, I had tried things like um, I did a lot of stuff, a lot of like uh, Amazon FBA, uh, I did a lot of different like eBay drop shipping, a lot of different stuff that just didn't really work for me. And like you know, I was on like my fifth or sixth business failure, and when I started like the accounting, the bookkeeping business, so I was always in my mind like, oh my gosh, maybe I just don't have the entrepreneur gene. Other people are making it work, but it's just not working for me. OK, next thing is having two to three displayed predetermined packages on your website. And while this isn't a pricing model, it actually does affect your ability to charge. Now, most people are focused on the lower end of the market. So they charge things like three hundred dollars for package one, five hundred dollars a month for package two and like fifteen hundred dollars. Maybe maybe if they're feeling if they're if we, like, you know, they're they're. Um, no, having a little bit more price, price, they'll be like $2,100 for like their top package. And even if you say starting at $1,500, when you get on the phone, you're going to have a hard time getting the client to want to pay more than about $1,500 a month or whatever the starting ass price point was. I know it sounds crazy. Okay. Sometimes I'll say stuff that like has happened with like clients. And I know it sounds crazy like to you and I, but People are weird when they think they're right. They're like, well, I remember seeing on your website it was $1,500 a month. Yeah, but no, it's, it's starting at. That means that that's the low end of it, right? You're, 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 you're doing $5 million a year. Why would you have the same price as someone that, you know, barely has the entry price? Well, no, it's at $1,500. And like, they'll argue with that just because they, they feel the right or they want to get like a discount, okay? Also, most of the time too, this is something that people don't really understand or think about. If they see three prices, most of them are going to try and fight tooth and nail to fit into like one of the smaller packages. So they're not going to want to do like this one. Like, well, I'm not that big. Or, oh, our scope of work isn't that big. And they'll be like, uh, I don't have that many transactions, right? And they always kind of give like these like vague answers. We say, well, the definition of package three is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Do you meet that? No, I don't really meet that. It's like this. I'm like, well, can I see your books to make sure? Uh, no, you can just trust me. <laughs> and they try and fit you in that package too. OK, so I don't like it for that reason. Just create unnecessary problems. Also, what that can create on the consultation calls, you're trying to sell people into when you're in a consultation call. You want it to be like you want there to be a couple different sales. You want it to be that they trust you. 
They trust your company if you have contractors, and they trust that the scope of work that they get done from you is going to be done correctly. You don't want to have another sale you have to make where it's like, well, which of the packages do I choose? Right? That's four. Our job on a consultation call, and our just job in business in general, is to eliminate the things that would cause someone to object to working with us. So by putting out those different packages, you have just added something to that, okay? And everything that you add is like uh, another objection you'll get, which is like, I need to think about it, right? So we want to eliminate those as much as possible. And we're going to do that by having a better quality price. And I'm going to talk about how I do the pricing. Actually, uh, probably in like one to two of these things, um, one to two of the next like bullet points. So next is hourly pricing. Hourly pricing is not inherently bad, okay? But it's actually for more established um, accountants and bookkeepers and a lot of different ways. Well, we'll say businesses, and I'll tell you why in a second. But it's really for more established just, just businesses in general, okay? For an example, if a company can provide you with 40 hours a week worth of work, you can make a lot of money if you charge a six-figure dollar per hour, okay? We'll, we'll talk about how to calculate like a dollar per hour on the six-figure rate in like a couple, couple minutes, um, probably like towards the end of the video. Um, so I do give you guys like a really simple pricing model to follow if you don't have a pricing calculator. But depending on the company that you work with, the number of hours that they give you on any given week can fluctuate pretty heavily, right? So it does make it slightly less ideal in that situation where like one week they give you a lot, next week they give you like none, week number two they maybe give you a little bit, then week number four they give you like oh, like nothing, right? It It just... It's hard to have that consistency in your income, which is what most people need in order to gain traction to kind of like leave their job and, and really have this business have like, you know, some legs of its own. <sighs> this is fun. I like this. Um, another aspect of hourly pricing is that if a company is very small, they might only be able to give you one to two hours every single month. And even if you're charging a hundred or hundred, we'll say for example, you just charge like a hundred dollars an hour, and they agree to a hundred dollars an hour. The most you're gonna make from that client is two hundred dollars a month. That's no bueno. That's just not good. Okay. The only time that I do hourly pricing, and I, I did get a chance to write this in my uh, notes, if I do hourly pricing, it's because I either have a team of contractors going to do the work for me, and I can just absorb as much work as possible, and slash or. Um, and really, in, in the case I'm in now, it's like if, if my team doesn't want to do or can't do it at this time, I just I don't do anything hourly. Right. But so if I have a team and I know it's a lot of work and I know it's a lot of hours, and I, they, they can give me like 40, 50, 60 hours a week for my team. It's like, OK, we're going hourly. Right. Now, next option is one percent pricing. OK, so one percent pricing. Now, this is like when you take like one percent of their revenue. So like, let's say that you're dealing with a company where it's like um, they're doing about, um, we'll say three million dollars a year and point zero one percent. That means you're trying to charge them thirty thousand dollars for the year. You divide that by 12, about twenty five hundred dollars per month is what you're trying to charge them on average. Right now. It's good in some cases, and we'll talk about like when you actually should use this methodology. It's not what you think, um, but it can be good. It's just, it breaks down in a lot of different ways when you actually have to explain how you came to that number. So let's say like a company has like really, really high revenue, but really low transactional volume. If the volume of transactions follows the revenue, it's not a terrible way to charge. But charging 1% revenue on a $2 million consulting company with a solo practitioner owner with under 200 transactions per year is very tough. Okay, so for example, one of our students, uh, before he joined our program, he quoted a guy $60,000 for a cleanup. Because the guy basically, I think it was, he the two prior years, he did $3 million for both those years. And the next year, he did like $10 million. So a student basically took the average out of that and he got like um six million dollars in revenue on average. So he basically did sixty thousand dollars off six million dollars in revenue. When the guy asked, like, why was the price the way it was, the student started stuttering, right? Because when you have a one percent price point, like it's I mean, what are you gonna do? Like, yeah, just still get your revenue and just charge like one percent. The person's like, Well, well, what? But I don't have that many transactions, right? So it kind of breaks down those higher dollar kind of like um deals, which you know, if you're doing like a lower dollar deal, they probably won't question it. But when you're talking about like, you know, when you get over $20,000, $30,000, dollars for cleanup, yeah, they start asking questions. So the student then joined our program. We basically gave him the pricing calculator, talked about how he should go and like present the work and present the value. So the next time that the person asks the question, um, 
then he'd be prepared. So they basically showed him the work is really worth about forty thousand dollars. The student went back and quoted him forty thousand dollars and can show, like they say in school, right? Show your work. Um, and the person accepted it. Person basically said yes and mailed him a check within about fourteen days of the new presented price point. Now, one thing that I've been doing unconsciously for a number of years now is I actually use the one percent rule as a check to see how easy it will be to get someone to accept my price quote. So I can then tweak my consultation call scripts like um, to spend more time on building value before I present the price. That way, and we'll talk more about like that in the sales process section of the book. So if you have the book, just go to like the sales process section. Uh, if you don't, we have some videos on YouTube that talk about that. Cool. Next thing is added revenue. Another way you can add like value and even price out your services to a certain degree. And this is like an add-on kind of pricing model. I wouldn't do added revenue as like your main model because in a lot of cases, if you're just doing bookkeeping alone and like you don't really understand how to add revenue, then it's it's not really going to be a really good process. This is just another model that we use. Um, we work with like students and it's like an add-on that you do. So another way to price is you can price on the value of a side deal on top of your existing bookkeeping and accounting services if you can clearly show how your service will add revenue to them for example our students that help their clients with services like forecasting inventory report and slash or bidding oftentimes you can charge a percentage of the lift that is related to your service so in the inventory example one of our students partnered um basically partnered with us to help him understand how to price out his clients. So he knew that he could help his client make more money by helping them with the inventory shortage that they're having. Um, they're, pretty, they're having those, those shortages pretty routinely. So we basically helped him calculate how much value he'd be able to add and how to really add a flexible rate so he could be compensated for the lift that he gave the company. He ended up helping the client to know exactly how much to order in inventory, resulting in about $750,000 in additional revenue that they actually missed out on the year before. To kind of give some context, in the prior year, the client that he was working with um, was an e-commerce company. Basically, they ran out of inventory on Black Friday. So they weren't able to like get their most popular products in for Christmas. Well, actually, until Christmas. That means they missed out on Cyber Monday. There's like generally with Cyber Monday, there's like an actual Cyber Week, and there's like deals just go longer and longer nowadays. And all the way, like even like the last minute Christmas shoppers they missed out on. Our student fixed that and has helped them even like get their average days in inventory down. And that's added value. He doesn't even charge for that part, extra part of it. But the cool thing is that on top of what he's already charging. For monthly services, he charged the client 2% for the excess revenue that he brought in from the inventory switch, uh, switch in addition that he gave them, and that was an add-on. So it's an extra $15,000 he earned just from knowing how to quantify the value that he adds on. Next thing, scope of work base. So I prefer to base my quotes off the work itself plus my labor costs to complete the work. So this is actually called hybrid pricing approach. Um, now, one weakness that most people have is that they quote the work, but when they start growing their business, they end up shrinking their margin when they have to bring in like staff or contractors to help them out. So I like to price my work with the labor costs already built into the price so I still have a healthy margin when my contractor team does the work. Now, in order to do that, you have to know what is the volume of work, what's the complexity of the work, and what are your labor costs and software costs that are involved with the project? I give all the students inside of our mentorship program a pricing calculator to help them accurately price all their clients. Or if they already have clients who like maybe they like underpriced, we actually help them increase their prices to the correct amount. If you want help like with pricing, book a call with my team see if we can help you out inside of our program. So to make our business easier and more rewarding to run, we oftentimes like to price our services between $500 to $5,000 a month, as we talked about earlier. Now, $500 to $5,000 a month is a very wide range. So let's take a look into how to calculate to know specifically what to charge. So again, keep in mind, I'm always trying to charge a flat rate if I'm doing the work myself, and I'm trying to do it in a way that's proportional to the value that I am providing. Now, you want it to be a win-win for everyone that's involved, like so we can continue to work with the same clients for years. Like You don't want to make it like a win-lose, right? Where you're winning, they're losing, right? Because even though it's, it's good for you in the short run, oftentimes some people can come to resent you and then they're just going to find someone who's, you know, just a slightly better opportunity for them, okay? So in order to calculate a flat rate for someone, we need to know three factors. Now, I've, I added this part of the chapter 
in the book because some people maybe you're not in our program you don't have our pricing calculator tools right but i still want you to be like successful right so i'm giving you a base level way to make a flat rate um using a couple different things like number one we need to know like what is your revenue goal number two how many hours per week do you want to work number three What's the scope of work um, by looking at your client's books or them filling out a qualification form? So basically, you take your revenue goal divided by the number of hours you want to work per week by the number of weeks you want to work in a year. So the normal annual working hours is about 40 hours per week. So you do 40 hours per week times 52 weeks in a year. That's 2080, right? That's traditionally like what most people will consider like a work week, 2080. Now, if your desired annual income is $120,000 per year, then basically you take $120,000 divided by 2080, and that breaks down to about $58 per hour. Round it up a little bit. Okay, cool. So that's the minimum you need to charge in order to be on track for your revenue goal. Now, this is just the starting point. So I know some people like don't want to just charge like hourly. That's okay. I'm going to give you how to flatten it out. Now, you need to turn that into a flat rate for the project. A simple way to do that for bookkeeping would be to take the number of transactions processed per month, then multiply it by 1.5 times. So say like one minute per transaction, plus we're giving ourselves like 30 seconds um, buffer of, of each transaction, just in case like either you move a little slower or maybe you hire someone that moves a little bit slower than you, right? Because you don't want to undercharge. Now, back to the math. So let's say it's 1,000 transactions times 1 1.5. That's 1,500 minutes divided by about 60 minutes in an hour. And now you have 25 hours worth of work per month for that client. Okay, then you multiply 25 hours, that's how, many, how much you have to work, right, times 58, and you get 1,450 per month uh, to stay on track uh, and to reach your goal each year. Now, if you can charge a slightly higher price by rounding up to the nearest round number, that's even better too. We call this adding a swagger fee. So let's say it's like fourteen fifty. If I want to get to like fifteen hundred, okay, I can add fifty dollars. Let's say it was like if it was at like sixteen hundred, and I know I can get away with it, I might want to raise it to two thousand, just the nearest round number, right? That, yeah, if it's like up by like a couple percentages, it's not really gonna make that big of a deal. Now you might be saying, Bryce, I can't charge that much money. And that might be true now because you don't have the right sales process in place. But keep reading, okay? I'm going to share how to communicate the value later on in the book when we talk about how to sign up clients. Just set any doubts and lack of confidence aside for right now. We're getting there, okay? So this can get kind of complicated, especially if you're dealing with a niche-related nuances and multiple services being needed, like payroll, bookkeeping, cleanups, tax prep, tax planning, I have a lot of pricing calculations and strategies inside my program that I help people with because, again, pricing is the number one thing that can cause success or failure in your business. So if you want help and you want to be able to know exactly what you should be charging to the highest probability of referral clients signing up, come and book a call with my team to see if I can help you. Now, if you're starting to feel a little bit overwhelmed at this point, like rest assured, we're going to break down the whole process in the next two chapters and give you a step-by-step -step process of what you need to do to take action and get your first results by the end of the book. So stay the course. Okay. In the end, it will be worth it because it's like nothing I've ever seen before. There is no other marketing source on the planet that gives you both the quality of the leads as well as the size of the clients that is getting these handcrafted referral partnerships that most people dream about like having. Okay, these are the connections your parents were referring to when they say it's not about who you know. Sorry, these are the connections your parents were referring to when they said it's not about what you know, it's about who you know. Okay, so just to wrap it up, chapter six key takeaways. When you know how to price your services above 6000 per year, you drastically lower the number of clients and effort needed to reach six figures in your business. In this chapter, we explored a simple way to price out your service to prevent undercharging. And then finally, when you know how to calculate your three factors, knowing exactly what to charge is very simple. Awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you want some help growing your business, you want to learn some of the different things we talked about inside of here, book a call, click the link, um, and see if it's a good fit, okay? I want to do the call with you, either myself or my team member. I want to see like, hey, can we actually help you out? To what degree can we help you out? And like, what is kind of the time frames we're thinking it'll take for you to be successful, okay? If we don't think you're going to be successful with our methodologies, like we are going to be the first people to tell you because, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately and fortunately, 
you have to work with the people that you actually bring into the program. So it doesn't make sense to like bring in people you can't actually help because they need to work with them for X amount of time, right? So we only want to work with people who we know we can help. So let's see if that's you. But if you want to see if you're going to be a good fit, click the link inside the description, book the call, and we'll talk to you soon. Have a good rest of your day. Take it easy.